Okay, hello, and welcome to my first podcast. If you don't recognise my voice, which you probably don't, it's my first podcast. I am Benjamin Stubbs, and I'm the founder and uh, person that brought together Headrest, you know, a new perspective on mindfulness. I'm a mindfulness coach um, and consultant, and I thought I'd put together this podcast, which is basically called Mindfulness And, where I get all different guests to come in, and then we ask ourselves, we bring five questions to the table or five statements to discuss um, with the other person. And uh, we don't know in advance what the questions are. So without any further ado, I welcome my first guest of this podcast series, <laughs> which is Harry Burke. Hello. Hello. Hi. No pressure. You've got to be good. I know. Exciting. Isn't it? If this is crap, then no one's going to be <laughs> So I blame you. Good not place me. to start. <laughs> I give you uh, full responsibility. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so what we've done is basically brought five points to the table, whether it's questioning of the person or statements. um, And so tonight's or today's podcast, depending on what time you're listening, is mindfulness and acting. Because Harry is an actor, aren't you, Harry? I am indeed. Try to be. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, but yeah, so we're going to be discussing, it's going to be an open forum. We've got five questions or statements each. And we will just discuss them and see where we're at because there's a. The best thing about all this is being open minded. On one of my latest YouTube blogs, I talked about the idea of. I don't know if you saw it, Harry. No pressure. Um, I did actually. I, I am viewer number one. <laughs> you are viewer number one. Always. Like, the idea of all this for me is that I'm not trying to out there to persuade anyone to believe what I believe, but I just think that if we can only see between certain spectrums of light and hear certain frequencies frequencies of sound and we know other things exist then how could we be that ignorant to believe there's nothing that we can't see hear, hear feel taste or touch you know what i mean i mean it's it'd be crazy of me to kind of discount those kind of things when what i do is ask people to believe something that isn't true <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the time i mean ask audiences and people that are paying money or people watching something to come and enjoy something that isn't actually real it's 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 a it's a construct of different ideas and and fantasies and all sorts so it'd be crazy of me to discount any kind of belief or thought or vision because that's what i do it's just what i I put my life into what i put my my effort into so that's not one of my questions but i will say that what do you why do you think people love the arts why because i work currently in education i've worked in education and it's it's unfortunately it frustrates me. It's poo pooed all the time. Like people always um, go, oh, it's only dancing, singing, acting, drawing. Mm. But it's one of the biggest money makers in the UK. Mm-hmm. Why do you think people are pulled towards the arts? I think there's a lot of things, but I think I think first and foremost, it's an escape. It's it's entertainment. It's passion. It's all these things that we live in life in in one set period of time we can sit down for half an hour and watch our favorite show and feel all these different things and escape from the world that we're in at the minute not not that everybody's sad and disappointed with what they're doing but everyone has stresses in their job everyone has different things that are going on in their life and they want to relax and and that's what we're there for i mean how how joyful an experience is it to to really feel something when you when you're watching someone act or when you listening to a piece of music or you're looking at a piece of artwork and you and you just think wow like that what is that feeling it's 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 euphoria isn't it it's it's a feeling of it's a feeling of just pure emotion and people like that the interesting thing about that that i find interesting about the arts is it's not like every piece of art whether it's art music drama whatever is happy it's not like every no. single theater you go to see you come out feeling like it's all about happiness and there's a happy ending. Yeah, we and like, all cr- that we like to cry. Yeah, but that's the interesting thing. Why? Why do you think? Because I'm interested to think why you think people would choose to watch a sad play. Why would people choose to watch saw movies? Why do you think people people choose to engage and in, indulge in, in art that isn't particularly quote nice emotion? Like, like I say, I mean, I think there's so many different genres now, and, and you say you say. If, a saw movie or something that's the fear that's the rush it's the adrenaline that that people get out of seeing that i'm not for horror movies <laughs> it's not it's not me but that's that's what makes it so special it's it's something that different people enjoy and i might enjoy the the adrenaline of doing 
some kind of sports activity or something high paced or fast because I enjoy that side. But if I'm watching a horror movie, I just don't, I don't like that. It gets my, it gets my skin on edge. And, but some people like, some people enjoy that. They, they enjoy the fear and they enjoy the rush and they enjoy the adrenaline of sitting in their seat and not knowing what's going to happen next. Um, but then if it comes to a sad movie, like, I love a sad movie. <laughs> I love watching something. It is, but why? There's something nice. There's something nice about just feeling emotions, isn't there? And do you reckon it's? And I personally think it is that they they listen, they watch sad sad movies because there's internal sadness that it allows an escapism. It allows a, an external time. channel for them to cry. So they're actually crying at your movie or your acting or your play, but actually they're crying about something about themselves. It can be that. Sometimes people just need a little thing to give them that. How much of a relief is it when you cry? When you've built up something or you've built up something in your head that may, may or may not be as big as it seems, but when you actually get to that point of just a, an explosion of emotion, how nice a feeling is that once it's over? Once it's over and all that pressure that's built up in your head and, and in your mind and behind your eyes, once that all goes... Everything just feels a bit lighter, doesn't it? It all just feels a bit softer. And I don't, I, maybe that is... Maybe people want that feeling subconsciously or maybe consciously. Maybe I mean, When people are down, they watch sad films. Yeah. No, it is. I think music, it depends what mood I'm in, it's mm. what music I listen to. Oh, yeah. Like, if I'm sad or angry, I don't, listen, don't want to listen to Whitney Houston. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But if I'm feeling no. bored or I want to... Like, and then I listen to club music or dance music. It, it, it's interesting that we find um, art kind of music film, TV, that matches our, our emotions. And I think it matches our personalities as well. I think I think some people can't stand going around an art gallery and looking at paintings or drawings or stuff like that. But they can sit and watch a movie for three hours. It's all arts and it's all expression, but it's just in different forms and people find themselves in different things. Obviously, the film industry is massive these days and TV and, and, and the internet and people just find themselves in those different forms of it but art is still a huge part of it and music is still a huge part of it and but some people connect to different things yeah I think but it's interesting that you you find the same emotions across the whole thing you can find a painting that's that's full of despair and full of angst and sadness but, but again it's interesting for me because like i said in one of my youtube like vlogs what sets us off what is it what like it's it's fascinating to me like and again, it, it's like it opens, asks more questions than it answers. But mm. why does a picture make us sad? What is in it? What is it in it that triggers it? Is it a look? Is it a memory? Is it a flash? Is it the energy we're feeling from the painting? Do you know, it, it's interesting, isn't it? That how like there was a um, study done, and please don't shoot me down if it's been debunked somewhere. <laughs> Um, cause I'm sure someone in the comments, uh, in the viewers comments. go wild at Benjamin Stuff. But like, no, there was the it's a Dr. Moto that did the Emoto, sorry, that did the um, idea of where he focused energy on on water mm. and it changed the molecular structure of water, mm. which is which is fascinating and it's been repeated many times apparently. Um, and I'm going to keep saying allegedly because you know, but what's fascinating by that, and if that's true, because again, I'm not you know that that is a fascinating kind of change in science with we've can alter matter around us so then that kind of makes sense if if someone's putting some emotion into a picture could they could they feel it well don't you feel that you project yourself onto your favorite characters in a tv show or i know you love friends i feel like <laughs> you know we 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 put ourselves in in the minds we we kind of want to live as those characters because we project ourselves as, as them I think and it's the same with the painting. Because we, we want to be like Emma's an escapism or because we look up to them. Why do you think we project? I think we see things about ourselves in them. I think I think when you see a character, that's that's why you have such clear tropes in, in movies that are set defined characters. You have a brave character, you have a weak character, you have all sorts of different characters, but you, you see those things from yourself and you place them onto those characters. You see bravery and you think this is something I'd, I'd do or this is something I can imagine myself doing and I could be the hero, I could be the knight, I could be the adventurer or whatever and and that's where you make that connection, I think. I think we we place... How many people have grown up wanting to be Luke Skywalker? Because he's a brave character and he's all about bravery and empathy and all those sorts of things and people love that. People people love projecting Do so you think the things. arts as well that create positive role models? 
like people that I think so I think I think a lot of our job is to if you if you're lucky enough to be in those positions is to make something like that and really really use that viewership for good because you can be you can learn something from everyone you can learn something from every character you play every character you watch everything well the funny thing right we'll go to our first question that i've got for your statement Mm -hmm. and it's kind of linking a little bit to what we're on about but like how do you personally deal with rejection how would you personally deal with it that's definitely on my list (laughs) um, how would you deal with something that in and how would you deal with it how have you dealt with it and are you okay with it okay so this one's this one's this one's strange because as much as people from the outside of of the arts industry want to know is is a very big question within the industry as well uh people talk about it all the time people ask each other how to deal with things and give advice and all sorts you deal the fact is the fact is you deal with rejection every single day you're always being you're always being rejected for things and and things don't go your way or you don't find yourself in this job or you don't land that job or an opportunity goes by or whatever um and i know i know that when i started when i first started getting auditions and getting interviews and meetings and i used to i a lot of the jobs that i didn't get were because i was afraid of not getting the job i would sit outside the audition room having done all the preparation that I could possibly do that I knew to do and, and gone through my entire process and done everything. Um, but I'd still sit there and I'd have my hands would be shaking. I'd be sweating. I'd be clammy. I'd be like, I, do I know my lines? You might have three words to say, but in your head, you're thinking, <laughs> you're thinking, Oh, I, am I going to forget them? Am I going to make a fool of myself? And that shows when you walk into a room, having been on, both sides of the of the panel. You can see when someone's come in and they've built up an image of what it's going to be like before they've even got in there. There's two points that are really interesting what you said there. One was you said that we have rejection every day, which is fascinating because we do. Mm. If, if In a weird way, like if you want something to go a certain way, like if I'm teaching yeah. and I want certain things to go a certain way and it doesn't, or a PowerPoint doesn't work at a talk as well, in a weird way, that PowerPoint has rejected me because it's not how I wanted it to be. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in some ways, you're right. You kind of build up a kind of plethora of rejections yeah. that could help build. Uh, and they do. Rejections aren't negative. They're... Which is always funny because the idea of like everything is what I said about the arts. I find, again, that I've learned as I've got older and with all the mindfulness stuff is everything on some level is subjective. Like if, yeah. if we understand that everything, whatever poll you see, it's never 100%. Which is the favorite? Your the best version of Bridge Over Troubled Water. Who's your favorite <laughs> character from Friends? Yeah. Who's the whoever it is? Do you believe in this? Yes or no? Do you believe the Earth is flat? Yes or no? Do you believe all, whatever poll there is? There's never any poll I've seen that's a hundred percent. Everyone agrees, which means that everything is some is subjective. So in a weird way, when you realize everything's subjective, there's always gonna be someone that doesn't like your version of that character yeah. or my version of mindfulness or my talks. It then makes you kind of some ways go. Well, someone's not going to like it, so it actually gives you an emotional freedom that you think, God, thank fuck, <laughs> yeah. mean? because then you're already at peace with the fact that not everyone's going to like it. Yeah, and and the thing is, it's like I say about rejection, it's, it's not it's not a bad thing. I mean, if you're not getting rejected, then you're either very very lucky or you're not doing anything. And the second point I was going to say, you, you're really right there, and as well, which is linked to your, your point, which is my next one of my other points <laughs> on here, which is how it's all linking. I know, mine, mine was the same as this. So um, I was going that's to fascinating. Um, <laughs> we, didn't know, we, we didn't tell each other, if you missed the beginning, we didn't tell each other what the kind of points were or questions. Mm. What I was going to ask you was, do you think, um, well, this is one of my awful handwriting, here it is, uh, do you think mindset has an effect at auditions? Yeah. Yeah, and more so, well, I think it's on par with what you bring in the room. I think a lot of the time, uh, some of the auditions that you do and some of the meetings that you have, you spend more time talking to your casting director or whoever's in the room than you do acting for them. And that might be because you're only in the room for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever. You might be in there for one minute. Your attitude when you walk in is everything. Like I say, sitting on both sides, you can feel, and, and we talk about energy, but you can feel whether somebody's going to get the job when they walk in the room. But that's interesting. Again, so I watch because... X, when you watch X Factor or anything like that, you see people walk what on stage and you know. That's the thing that I, I that when people say to me, oh, it's a crock of shit. And 
and I'm like, well, I'm not saying believe everything, but mm. like, what is that? You know yourself when you think there's something about them. Yeah. I've seen it in certain people, and I think they're going to be successful. And they are. And mm. five, six, seven years down the line, they're doing amazing things in their job. Now, there's something about them, but what is that? And you're right. What else can we describe as, as energy? It, what, 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 how else would you describe what it? What is it? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's confidence, it's belief, it's... it's there's something powerful about it, isn't there? There's something you, you feel when you should take a second look at that person. You think, oh, this person's going to do something. This person... And you... I, I'm, We all meet... Everybody in the acting industry meets so many actors and so many directors and so many casting directors. It's unbelievable. And it's not right to say that you know who's working hard and you know who's going to be successful and all that sort of stuff because you never truly know some people just need to kick up the bum or whatever to just get going but you can feel on your first impression of someone you think yeah that person's made for this why do you think it's actors then certain people um oh, five words what day is it? <laughs> Live. Um, <laughs> it's just the test. Right. It's just the test. Um, why do you think then with certain actors, like you, you get certain actors, you gel with instantly and certain actors you don't. And why do you think that is? What is that? And what do you think even makes it work or not work? I think that's a personal chemistry. Uh, and I think What's the chemistry? Exactly. I mean, I feel like I'm so many leading questions, but that's what I'm fascinated well, it, by. Of course, that. it is. I mean, it's it's how do you choose your friends? How do you end up with the friends that you end up with? How does that happen? It was funny with me. I find that um, it's it's like a part of me goes, I like them. It's like a little not a ding, but like I think I like that person. Yeah, as a I just something about them. I think I like, and I it's not it's a sexual. It's not a I need to be friends with them, hold my hand, let's, no. you know. But it's more the not. thing of I like them. There's something yeah. about them I like. But I don't sit there and go, do I like them? But it's no, just no, it's just a feeling. I, I think immediately you know. It is an attraction. Someone. Yeah, of course well, it is. Of course it's an attra- it is. The best description a... is an attraction. Yeah. Um, and you think, yeah, I like them people. And like that can them. be something in common. It can be personality traits that you just like in people. You don't even know that you like them. But yeah. I think about my friends and a lot of them, though they're all completely different people, they carried the same sort of things. They, they, they're, they're the same kind of people and... and that's clear to me that I like a certain kind of person as friend, as a friend, and I like to have those people closer to me because I don't know it's, it's there's that's your support network, isn't it? The problem is when you talk about friends, you always hear in between us, don't you? Oh. Friend, it's been <laughs> it's been tainted, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. So much, especially with my friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it is a lot of my friends have the same feel, and everyone that I've as I've got older and I've been more mindful and been more in tune, you know, for lack of a better word, with who I am and what I am and what I believe and, and being in tune what I'm thinking and feeling I've never really gone wrong with people like everyone that I've trusted has never broke my trust mm-hmm. later on in life um, people that I've liked have been decent people and have been successful not that you've got to be successful to be a decent person yeah. but I've, and it seems like I attract that type of people and it comes back to the idea of what you give out you get back and maybe it's just you get more sensitive to it of what you know your instinct that you, you pick and choose and it's in it's to bring it back to, to, to where we started, I mean, when you think about the rejection and you think about going into a room and all this sort of stuff, you you know that you know that the person that you're going meeting or the people that you're going meeting will get a read on you and they'll get a feel for you as soon as you walk in the room and it's not like they're sat there wanting you to be horrible. They want you to be great and they want you to be wonderful and it's about not worrying because it's very, very easy, especially when you're starting out, to fear. And I know people that have been to tens, hundreds of auditions and still get scared. And that's not because they're a bad actor. That's because they're, they're people and they've got emotions. And it's a bizarre situation. It's unlike anything I've experienced outside of that. It's just a peculiar thing. It's very you have to you have to be very be okay to be vulnerable because you're literally oh, yeah. putting yourself yeah, on. You and again, going back to in education. It's again, it, it's ridiculed the arts, but actually, the arts. If you're doing performing arts, whether it's sorry, performing arts or kind of obviously physical arts like you know painting, drawing, etc., mm. or creative designs on the computers, you're putting you're being vulnerable. You're putting your design out there yeah. at, to to be judged, whether it's good or bad, and it does make you stronger. And there's no question. I've had uh, students that 
moved courses from um, something to performing arts. And even I was shocked this, this student moved because they didn't speak, didn't really interact. And he came out of his shell in performing arts and now mm. he's doing amazing things. I think he's in uni doing performing arts. Mm. But it just shows you that. But what is that? I think it's the idea of it gives you a chance to grow and put yourself out there. So when you're auditioning, I can imagine that it has the potential to eat away at you so much. Because yeah. I, when I do see some people, they're very insecure. Mm. And do you think being aware of that, and again, it sounds like a leading question, but being mindful of that, helps you deal with it so you do not absolutely. get eaten by insecurity absolutely i mean there's again it's bizarre in that there's a lot of power stakes in in the industry and you know that you're walking into a room with <clears throat> a lot of the time somebody of importance because they're the person who's deciding who's going to get a job or at least presenting the uh company with a, a list of people or suggestions of people that that, that are going to get a job um and and yeah, it's just accepting that. Look, there's always another audition, and though you may <laughs> desperately want something, it might just not be right for you, and it might just not be for you, and that's fine. That's absolutely it's not an issue, it, and you can't think it is because the amount. I don't know what's worse when you're starting out before an audition or after an audition because they're both horrendous. <laughs> The being imagine. in the room isn't that bad. It's once you get in there and you start going, you're like, okay, right, I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, but before it, you're thinking, oh, and you're seeing all these people that are sat next to you, and you're like, oh. But then you leave afterwards and you analyse every single breath you've taken, every single blink you've had, and every single word you've spoken. Like, was it wrong of me to say that? Yeah, I'm okay. Should I have been? Yeah, I'm brilliant. Or I've been doing this. Or is it okay that I haven't had a job in? two weeks and I said that uh, should I have pretended that but you've got to be true to yourself it's all about and I think in ev every aspect of life if you try to be somebody that you're not people can see through it immediately and it makes you far less attractive a prospect I think the um, <clears throat> the idea of, of uh, when you come out of something to like you do a lot of teacher training a lot they always say to assess what you've done and I think that's positive because you need to learn and grow from it and I think that's where for me where the mindfulness comes in is of course we need that objective like uh, and if any of you have been to my talks or workshops, you know I talk about the two um, mind mentality, the idea that you have two sides to your personality, you have your mm -hmm. left brain and right brain, one's more creative, one's more practical. Mm -hmm. And the same with your personality, you've got two sides of the seesaw. So you've got the the side that is what I class the, the kind of spiritual connection, the creative side, and then you have the egoic side, which a lot of people talk about, not ego as in you've got a big head, but ego is in the one that kind of that it's keeping you safe, the fight or flight, the kind of oh, you know, the, the keeping it, keeping you safe, looking out for things. And the problem is that the Western culture, especially, is that side, the egoic side, rules the roost. Like you're too fat, too thin. Oh, you're ugly. Oh, you kind of like oh god, you're no good. Now, if a lot of people spoke to us the way our ego spoke to us, we would not accept it. But a lot of people don't even know that exists. And when I've done workshops and I've talked to people and I've worked with them one to one, I've gone, if you put those two sides of the brain out in front of you and go, right, who's speaking now? Because if, if you if people spoke to you the way you speak to yourself probably after an audition or we used to, mm -hmm. then you would not allow it. If someone said, oh, you're shit, why are you bothering? You would not accept that. Yet we accept it because we think it's us. And when we put that part, them two parts of our personality in front of our, our mind's eye and go, right, we, who's talking now? And, and, <laughs> and that observation just helps with me it's called the observation mm. and awareness, it then quietens down because it, it isn't true. And actually, you can take the positives from what you've done and the negatives and learn and grow from it, but then it doesn't become incessant. Anything that repeats itself is incessant and not needed and you don't need to feel it. And that's a really good technique is just observe who's speaking because the thing is, it's the thing about being positive. Like, you know, you've got to be more positive. But if you're wrapped with anxiety, being positive is a bit like, it sounds a bit rank, but like spraying air freshener after you've been for a shit, it's just like smells yeah. like shitty flowers. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? And yeah. the same with this. So if yeah. you don't deal with that anxiety and why you're so crippled by it, then it's absolutely pointless trying to think positive. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I think with it, that I found that observation of that other voice yeah. going, okay, and what else? So I literally speak to it and go, anything else? What do you want to say? Uh, well, you, you're crap. Okay, I'm crap. Oh, three people didn't like your talk. Okay, three people didn't like my talk. Go on. And eventually it runs out of things and the ego always, yeah. it's bare last resort to get you is, well, you could die. <laughs> <laughs> that is the base thing that it well, would get I to. Well, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's but what's fascinating about that is when you're aware of that, then you can then be, it, 
again, I'm not demonising the ego. I'm just saying be aware of it. Mm. And actually, it's there to keep you safe. It's there to stop you running, walking off a cliff. Be that it's instinct. There to, and it's there to help you be practical. And you need your ego yeah. to be practical. But I think with it, that I think you've got to um, be aware of that and go, that actually, this isn't just me. This is a part of my personality, but it doesn't have to rule the roost. And what I found with it, over in my life personally, is as I've been aware of it and observed my meditation that's mm. free on the website, by the way, headrest.me. Plug. Um, plug. Um, it's all about the observation. So it's really good technique to help with that. But I think a lot of people struggle because without that, I used to overanalyze everything, thinking it was me being practical. Mm. And it wasn't. It was just me being incessantly negative yeah. about myself. And after a while, it just dragged you down. Do you know what helps is repetition. Repetition of, of enjoying the process and knowing that you'll be fine afterwards and that you won't die and that it's only a person that you're going meeting or two people or three people or whatever. You're going in and you're doing your job and all of a sudden it becomes way less huge. It's a good point. It's a bit like facing the, the, the elephant in the room. Do you know what I mean? Like, and yeah. it's, it's, you are. Like I do with the ego. I kind of talk to it and then like rationalise with it going, is this... Because if you don't realise you've got two sides to your personality, then you then just think it's you chattering in the back of your head like a monkey. Mm. And actually it isn't. It's actually two parts of your personality. And what's nice about it is when you calm down, you are naturally more positive. Yeah. You're naturally more, oh, it's okay. You naturally let things go. And that I think that is the key that I <laughs> And you start to talk like a human. <laughs> you start to talk like a human. <laughs> you start to talk properly like a person. You know, like how you'd speak to someone at a counter at the shop or in the street or whatever. Yeah, because you take the pressure off. You take the pressure off. And at the end of the day, the start of an audition usually is, is a little conversation for a lot of the time. And you'll sit down and you'll just chat for a if few minutes. If people listen to this thinking, mm, I don't want to forget this. Or, I, or actors that listen to this going, well, what can you mm. tell me? Has it changed you? Have you... Since not we chatted like I'm taking credit, not yeah. at all, but like because I know we've chatted about this off the mic. Um, off have the you mic. seen benefits in the way you deal with things since being aware of all this? A thousand percent. In more so in the last, because I think for me personally and professionally, I've come on massively. I've become far more mature in the last twelve months than than I had ever been. I mean, I thought when I first came into this when I first dealt with agents and first dealt with casting directors I thought I knew it all I thought not out of arrogance but out of I thought oh I'm a confident person but then you put yourself in that situation you think oh well, maybe I'm a bit more fragile than I thought I was but there's so many things that are rooted in the arts that are linked to being mindful and, and looking after yourself uh and they've helped hugely. It helps you become a better business person. It helps you become a better person. And do you know what? Your relationships improve across the board. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of casting directors from when I first started auditioning uh, that thought, this guy is weird. Or thought, <laughs> or thought, what is he doing? He's sweating buckets. He can barely say a word. He's saying all the wrong things. But now I, I enjoy meeting new casting I enjoy meeting new actors, I enjoy meeting do, new directors because it's a new person to me. And, and as much as I enjoy my own company a lot of the time, I really enjoy meeting people and it's certainly people that have joint interests with me. As someone, because again, if someone's listening that is an actor mm. or an actress, sorry, that is go, going, well, yeah, but what practically has it changed? Have you got any stories or any evidence? Evidence is probably too strong a word, but like that you know that through your mindset and through who you are, the difference you are now compared to before, that you would not have got what you've got without it. <laughs> well, I can, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you a really embarrassing story because everyone's got embarrassing audition stories. Um, I was. <laughs> I was being seen for a uh, a TV show and I sat in the audition and I was chatting and uh, <laughs> it was me and uh, another girl who was auditioning and we were reading reading these this scene together and we were chatting between between sort of reads and chatting to this casting director and she'd been chatting for a while and I was very conscious of it and I was in my head because this was my first ever TV audition really for one of my first anyway um, and she'd been talking and getting on with the casting director and I'm thinking in my head I'm like she's getting more seen than me and like she's getting 
she's getting more conversation than I am, and I'm just kind of sitting here, like, a bit weird. And then we finally started talking, I had no idea what to say. And he asked me what, uh, what I do outside of acting, and the only thing I could think of was to say that I like dogs. <laughs> 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 So, so, um, I was sat there, I was sat there, uh, with this casting director and he literally said to me, so, so what, what do you like to do outside? And I was like, I like dogs. And that, do you know, you say something like, I literally had nothing to say. I'd been thinking that much and I'd been getting on my own back that much in my head that I had nothing and obviously, I I, I like dogs, <laughs> but it's, that's not me. I mean, that's not my only thing to my life. I'm not just a crazy dog freak. And um, but no, yeah, no, it's, it's that, but isn't that a bit like when you fancy someone? And oh you're like, yeah, you overthink because yeah. you really want to impress them. Yeah, but then when you but then if you don't fancy this someone, it's really cringe. That, yeah, yeah, but and and you have to laugh about those things because that was super embarrassing. <laughs> um. And thankfully, I have a lot of I have a lot of friends in the industry that know that story and like to take the mick out of me for it. So it's it's funny great. though. Looking back from a kind of you know, obviously someone that's interested in mindfulness. I think then mm-hmm. what happened is you got yourself in such a, a mental tiswad, for lack of a word. Yeah. But then you literally spat out some crap. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And, and lots of the, obviously it is what it is. Yeah. But it's interesting that then if you're not, then you're just naturally in the flow and you kind of. Yeah. And have I, you got any that's the other other way that you think I dealt with that really well, or you got feedback that was a positive, or you got a job? Or... Yeah, I mean, the, there was there was a job earlier. This I year. do like the dog story though. Yeah, that was unbelievable. Um, but ever since then, every every audition that I've been to, maybe not immediately after that, but that was a big thing. That and many other completely embarrassing stories um, have formed how I conduct myself now because. In, in auditions now, it's like I, I went down to London earlier this year for, for a really awesome audition. And um, I recall that that was a real, I didn't get the job, but that was a real enjoyable process. And it was bigger than a lot of the jobs that I'd been for before. Um, and I was, I, in fact, it was, it was quite full circle, to be honest. It was a bit weird because I remember sitting in the, I was sitting in the waiting room in this little casting studio in London. Thinking about dogs. Not, um, well, <laughs> you never know. A lot of the time it's I've never heard that story before. Yeah. Sorry, no, continue. Yeah, embarrassing. Cringe. Um, but we, I was sat at this table and I was, I was probably about 20 minutes early for the audition anyway. So I was just sitting there having a glass of water and a coffee and reading over my lines and just, you know, relaxing. And this younger lad came in who was going for a different part to me and he sat down at the he sat down across the table from me and, and I was looking at him and I was thinking that was me <laughs> cuz he was not like I, I couldn't see in his face that he was like scared but you you knew that he was nervous. And you have every right to be nervous because because mm. it's an exciting opportunity and you don't want to mess up and, and you want to you want to do right because you really want the job and it'd be really fun and all those things going through your head. But I then tried to do my best to try and calm him down because mm. not not by going oh you look nervous because what's that going to do that's just going to make the sweat glands on your head go <laughs> even. <laughs> um, but we just chatted for a few minutes and and it felt really nice because. He was clearly super nervous and super worried about it. And he went in and he did his bit and he came out with a big smile on his face. I don't know whether he got the job. Of, I don't know. Maybe he did. Um, but it's those kind of things that in your head you think, wow, that's what I was like. And really, does it matter that much at the end of the day? I found interesting what you said then about the fact that you said, well, I just enjoy it now. And isn't that... I love Again, it. the key that the thing is, you're doing this job. If you did it for the B, or you did it for the end thing of getting that role, then then role might, that role might be a week's performance mm. on stage, and you've got all that time you can have quote wasting yeah. because you're not enjoying it. Yeah. And isn't that the fact of just enjoying it all? And I, I know the, the cliche phrase that life's a journey. You hear it so much, you think, oh bollocks, you know. But the idea that you're doing this job because you enjoy all aspects of it, yeah. and if it, and if you are taking a step back and being more relaxed about it, then you can enjoy the whole 
process rather than going, but I'm only going to enjoy it if I, I get the job. And if I don't, then I hate it. And I hate the journey to the London. And I hate the underground. And I hate doing this. And I hate auditions. And I hate, yeah. rather than going, I'm going to enjoy the journey. And I definitely had that at the start. Hmm. I definitely built up a bit of a, do I actually want to turn up? Do I want to go? Like you do with job interviews, like when you when you searching for your first job, or whatever. Do I want to walk in and go and hand in my CV? That's embarrassing. But again, what I found with it in in my life that sometimes you you go, you think you're going down the A500, but then you get taken on the M6. Like, well, I don't want the M6. I want the A500. <laughs> and actually, you go you go to certain things, and you don't get what you think you want. But from that, you meet someone mm-hmm. else later on. I remember I was meditating once, and then a vision came that like like I was looking down, I was at a jigsaw piece, but like to my left was like this continuous jigsaw piece where I'd fitted piece of the puzzles and at the moment I'm on the jagged edge where there's all these to the right of me all these random pieces I've not put in yet and mm-hmm. then the jagged edge where I'm trying to find pieces and sometimes oh yeah this fits here oh that fits there this fits here and this ongoing puzzle that's moving to the right but then sometimes you're like and eventually a piece fits you're like god that piece has been there for years <laughs> and now it clicks into why yeah. that you met that person six yeah. years ago who's now messaged who knows this person who's then done this and, and you think, God, and it's having that, again, that, that faith. Like, I'm not religious in the sense of in religion, but I the idea, I understand now where the, the idea of faith comes, that you've got to trust in the process, trust that everything is going to work out. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes we blind ourselves to opportunities that we see as misses, when actually we could have missed that but fallen somewhere else. I agree. And, and to just finish that anecdote, I mean, it, when I went in and had that audition experience, it was one of the most enjoyable ones I've had yet. One of the most, it was surreal. It was it was a bizarre experience where I had to sing a song, yay. Um, and while I was singing, the casting director was singing along with me and it was it was bizarre. I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe just thought maybe, because I don't tend to sing a lot, but you do it if, you, if you've got to or, and you've got to enjoy that part of it. You've got to, oh, thanks. Um, and she was, I don't know whether she saw that, I'm maybe uh, somewhere I was a little bit nervous about that or a little bit uptight about that. and Or maybe she just enjoyed it and she was singing along and it was just peculiar. And then afterwards I had some amazing feedback, which by the way, you rarely get. <laughs> it rarely, rarely ever happens. And I was really close to that job. Um, but looking back, you think, really, I don't know. It's not that I wouldn't have wanted to do it, but I mean, you look back and you, and you think, well, Maybe I wouldn't have enjoyed it at the end of the day. Or maybe I wouldn't have enjoyed it, but that's that's not the important thing. The point is, is that I had a nice day. I managed to see a friend and and do different things and, and do even this if you hadn't, and enjoy even it, yeah. if you don't know, like in year two years, you you the no. role might come up. And you never this know. woman might think, you know, do you know what that, that Harry guy was fantastic. We'll get him. You in. never know. And a lot of a lot of jobs come from that. Is that jobs come from jobs in in the arts <laughs> they they produce more jobs that just tends to be how it works that's how it's worked in my career so far and it's always been a chain of things and you just end up doing all sorts of different things with a common denominator of one person or a company or, or different things that have, have got you into different jobs um but i'm glad you i'm glad you said about uh having the faith because i think what to sum this all up is different now about when I started is that now I know that I'm in the right industry for me. Now I know for sure that I'm in the right industry and I'm comfortable to have the patience that it requires to get the jobs that I want to get and having the faith that those things will come because I know that I'm there or thereabouts a lot of the time. Um, But at the start, it's completely new and it's completely strange and scary and it's a big world of powerful people and scary people and all that sort of stuff but now it's just I know I don't necessarily know where I end up in the industry I don't know what my place is in the long run and I'm, all do, I'm, do we? no of course we don't because it's malleable you've got to be malleable especially in something that's ever changing and fickle like arts but I know that I have a place and that it's an industry that I should be in so I remember it's a phrase that calm seas never make a skilled sailor and the mm. thing is and also there's a I think I don't know if it's a mythical study, but I've heard it by a few people, so I think I assume it's true. Yeah. They did a study at Alton Towers of three low, three groups of people: uh, people that waited no time to go on the rides, people that waited two and a half hours, and people that waited half an hour. And the people that waited half an hour enjoyed enjoyed the the day the most. 
because that anticipation, that yeah. looking forward to it, you're more appreciative of it. But then also, two and a half hours took too long. <laughs> but my final question, because I know that you've got some familiar statements, was and it's funny, it links on to you said the word faith. I said, where would you, where would you put yourself on a spectrum of, I would say spirituality, because I can't think of a better word, mm. but like one side being, you know, 100% spiritual, 100% the other side being, don't believe, it's all a load of crock of you know what, where would you put yourself on your spectrum and why? It's very, it's, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? Because I think it changes with a lot of a lot of aspects in my life. I mean, I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say I'm not a particularly religious person. Um, that's one aspect of spirituality that I'm not, I've never engaged with, never had that kind of faith or belief. Um, but I think. You have to place, I think everybody has to place themselves on there somewhere because things happen in your life that, that seem random or seem bizarre and I don't know, there's something something must make that happen, do you know what I mean? And, and yeah, it's tough because I know that I've had... something when, when you're in... Because I put on here, and I remember my fifth question, because I'm not going to lie to the listeners, but I wrote the five questions down and fucking lost my sheet. And Whereas I was trying to remember them before. And I remembered it, mine. and it links into this point perfectly. That And now I forgot it. <laughs> but no, because when you explained. when you're in the flow and you're in the... in the You're, in, you're doing it, and you're mm. in that... You're acting, and you're in that moment. Mm. What is that? So when it's they say something in the zone, entirely it's separate. It's, it's something entirely separate to you, isn't it? I think... It's the same for anything. I, I imagine it's the same if you're driving at high speeds. I imagine it's the same if you're in a boxing ring or whatever. It's the same when you get into that zone at the gym when you just block everything out. And I think that's what I love about it. I think it's that moment and it's just something entirely separate. It's, it's your engaged in you're obviously doing your job and that's something that you're conscious of but you're also living in, in a different moment and you have to believe it and you have to experience it otherwise you can't expect anyone else to experience or believe it do you think you're blocking or do you think you're tuning to something else do you think you're blocking things out or do you think you're so focused that you're just not even focus on other things i think it's a I think the focus has to come from somewhere and I think you have to develop that focus and where that comes from I I, I don't know if I know the answer to I mean it's, it's something that because where do you think ideas come from you build with me in a <laughs> <laughs> dreams I don't dream know. mine come from I'm dreams just I'm not lying <laughs> I once I once wrote an entire I, I wrote a play on the back of a dream that I had after going on a night out I woke up the next morning and I was like I had an amazing dream I want to write it <laughs> and uh, and I sat there the next few days and wrote a play I mean it's, it's not finished but that was 12 months ago now. <laughs> but you know I mean it's just one of those things you get sparked by things don't you and little bits of inspiration come in, in everyday life and that's what's exciting about life isn't it is that, that you get the inspiration comes from everywhere when you have when you surround yourself with creative people and you love creative people and you are a creative person or you try to be a creative person, then those things are exciting, and that's what I enjoy. And yeah, I'd say that I think sometimes as well that when you're with certain people, there's a synergy there that, that oh, then, totally but then, is. but then, totally why is. being around three people? Because of the question I was kind of open ended questions to ask myself, why being around say three or four people that get on really well, then go bam, 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 bam with ideas? Yeah. Why not? If it's just random, then if I was with four people that I didn't particularly like, yeah. why am I not? Getting ideas with them as much as fast as other people. Openness and connection. Yeah, and the connection. Synergy is, isn't it? It's, it's and what being, the heck is that? And what is that? That's the question. But it's, like we say, it's that thing when you walk in and you allow yourself to be vulnerable and you allow yourself to be open. And that's that. That's and I think people, this time and day and age, crave authenticity. Yeah. Um, I know someone that works for a big radio station. And they had a audience, not survey, but you know, uh, demographic. And what they're saying, the youth are after now, is authenticity. Mm. They look up to realness. And I thought, isn't that funny? Because they want, we crave that connection. We, I think we're sick of that false narrative and mm -hmm. falseness. And people actually want real. They want um, 
to feel they they're getting the person that they're listening to rather than just my favorite radio DJs if I listen to them are ones that I feel that they're being themselves warts yeah. and all but not faking it and trying to be like that's really I, northern that's to fit in or being really southern to fit in or yeah. being really something to fit in because I think sometimes people do try to manipulate normalness to then try and be normal yeah. but I just again people feel I, I, it just feels disingenuous for me and I don't feel a connection and I I don't mind people being rough around the edges at all because normal's perfect but I'd rather have things around people isn't it yeah than, than a fake facade of everything oh, thing. you I was saying about connections, you can't you can't meet somebody who's fake and and not authentic or putting on a face or putting on a mask or whatever. Ironic. Um but you can't meet a person like that and, and connect with them like you can with someone who's real. You just can't. Because yeah. something in you, something in your head, certainly in my head, I meet someone who's I don't believe is acting as themselves and I kinda go but you can feel it, can't you? And again, of course you can. In a weird you can way, see. Is, yeah, you can, you can see s- someone if someone if you know for a fact that someone's blatantly not very cool and and funny or whatever, but they're trying to be the guy and they're trying to be this and that because that's what they think is is how they should portray themselves. It's not. You got to be yourself. And funnily enough, the more yourself you are, the more you end up getting the things that you want. Because people like you, they don't like a, a and if they don't, trope, they don't the subjective facade. thing again. Someone's always going to like you, and someone's always not going to like yeah, you. Yeah, so of like, they are. It is like literally get the fuck over it, and it's it's so freeing. And I'm not going to say that someone give me abuse in the street, I wouldn't be a bit offended. But what I think yeah. mindfulness has done for me is not is because people think, oh, you're happy all the time. You're not happy all the time. Of not. I get angry less, but when I do, it's I'm like a child more now. I get angry if I do, it's quick, sharp. But I but controlled and I can deal with it and it doesn't mean that you you're a pushover you let everything go, but I also kind of things don't bother me like they used to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that you know with it it's made me more. Yeah, I tuned into other people better and also made me more that I don't care what people think and the subjective thing has massively helped me that some people aren't going to like me and some people are going to like me. So actually, I can't really do much about it. And if they don't like my haircut or they don't like my mindfulness talks, they don't like. It doesn't really matter because everyone, someone out there is going to listen to this and not like it. Mm. That's absolutely fine. I did my, I put my um, my um, meditations on a meditation app, Insight Timer. It's on there, and um, some people loved it and some people hated it. But yeah. actually, it was so refreshing for me to read the comments and think, "Oh, I actually, don't like it." And I replied to him saying, I "Understand, I do speak fast. I understand that you know I am not as kind of polished, you know, and I get mm. that." But then some people loved it, so that. Maybe then be able to detach from the negative ones and appreciate what they said and not be personally f- feel it attacking me. Yeah. Uh, but also enjoy the good ones and think, oh, actually, people did like it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but people like you for you. What's the What's the point in putting on audio filters and and speaking properly? Because and we feel that pressure too, don't we? Because well, we feel the pressure too. People see a microphone or they see a camera, and there's a lot of getting over that in, in getting into acting, and and they go into a well, this is my camera voice, or this is this is my camera face, or this is my good side, this is my bad side. <laughs> um, but you've got to be, you've got to be real. You've got to be real in your life because that's what people like. Yeah, people like you for you, and if you don't, who cares? Yeah. At least you're not pretending. Have you got any points for me? I, I have. It. I mean, it, it comes from me. It, it comes from it comes from what we're talking about. Funnily enough, like everything else I've written down, <laughs> with, <laughs> with no prior planning, we have the same things. Um, I was wondering how many people you think actually engage with mindfulness and meditation without knowing. Well, the word, the funny thing that you say that because meditation. The word just means quieting of the mind. Yeah. So meditation could be running. Meditation, and you said, well, that's why I was very picky at the point when you said, oh, you can block things out. Yeah. And I was literally leading question. Yeah. Because I, I don't believe you are. I think you're focusing so much in that moment because my, being mindful is being in the, in the moment. Now, people could say, oh, I think it's this. Absolutely, you, everyone's allowed their own valid opinion. Mm-hmm. But I think mindfulness is being in the moment. So in that moment when you're on stage, you're in that moment, you're that like character, you can, or oh my god the bill yeah. I've got to pay or that person pissed me off in the car you're like in that moment so in that moment you're in the all the isness mm. so 
you, there's no past or present there's no fear because you're in the moment and and that's why I think people do that without realising I think they have it when they watch football that's why I think for me football is a quote religion for a lot of people mm. and not being sexist but especially men if you think about it their their team is their god they're very loyal to the point oh, where they yeah. will cause violence um, and in that moment they're focused and that, and that part of being a community etc um, people when they when they go running I chatted to a guy um, at work and he was talking about he runs because it helps him with depression so like the, it, certain things for me that I think people do engage in it and it's not about me saying right mindfulness is just um, meditation you've got to sit there and om om is quite nice as well but it's just about finding things that detach you or focusing on you on something else that isn't the shit of the day to day mm-hmm. life that you think you know that you're not thinking about that thing incessantly so techniques that you can you can pick up that help with that like you won't go to the gym once and expect it's muscles but some people expect to meditate once they'll go away a, 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 a yeah. retreat for weekend and suddenly it's something you've got to do and work on but you, it, you you get a lot of pleasure from it and you get a lot of benefit from it and I think so people do engage do I believe watching EastEnders is mindful not really because I think you're, you're detaching and focusing on something that isn't particularly positive mm. um, self it depends how you feel afterwards you might do you might, some people say I just chill out watching crap telly I get that point why people watch it but I think it's but being mindful in meditation is the idea of, of, of taking your focus off something else, taking turning the kettle off, and then you know the, the the hissing kettle and just focus on something else. And that's why people like art and and doing little uh, drawings and paintings and little crafts etc. Because it gives their focus on that. And that's why I think for me a lot of the meditations I prefer are the ones that that are the observation. I'm just focusing on something. If I'm like, the meditations, and I'm not dissing them at people making them that are listening, like, oh, you're a tree and walk towards the sand or walk towards the... I'm like, well, how big is the tree? Where is the tree? Is it over there? Is it over here? And I overthink it and I think... So to to answer your question, I think people are mindful and meditate in different ways and there's no right or wrong. And my job's not to say you should be meditating with your eyes closed with lit, lit candles, but it's finding things that you know make you feel... That, that connects on something else. I find it's just interesting to me because I found when I... Because I'm kind of a sporadic meditator. I'm not a daily. Um, but I found when I first started getting into meditation that I'd been doing it for years in my job because the, the warm-up is meditation. Oh, we, when- it's the, funny. the warm up is meditative throughout school and throughout college and all of the the education that I've had in active. The first half an hour of a class or whatever is pure meditation. It's all we do. Our, our mutual friend, um, one of our mutual friends, has now gone to a college in London, an art, uh, performing arts college, and he messaged me the first year, like every couple of weeks, going, "Oh my god, Ben, it's all mine. Oh my god, we're doing this. Oh my god." Yep. And uh, and it is finding those ways of just that's why because I feel that I'm not an actor. I have done some musical theatre, um, as you might know, uh, but I wouldn't say acting is my first, is my strength. But I know when I'm not fully tuned in. I know, and I, and for example, with, with before um, I kind of really pushed the business more, I I knew that I wasn't feeling myself. So I thought, I'm going for a big old walk. And I went for a big old walk. I was on holiday with my family. Went walk up the cliffs and sat there for an hour and just chilled. Watched the kids play. Watched the uh, waves rocking. The, the the wind was blowing about like anything. And all of a sudden, I could just feel just slowly my body. I wasn't going, right, I need to calm down. Because again, the pink elephant, it just get more stressed. Mm-hmm. I was just enjoying watch. And all of a sudden, an idea came. Oh, Instagram. Oh, I could do this. And I was more tuned in to my answers. Yeah. So, you know, I think we talk about in the Bible asking it's given. And I believe we are we do get answers to our questions, but we just don't hear them because we're so the ego is so cha 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 that you don't actually hear them or feel them or, or decode them, so to speak. So yeah, I think we do. And I think it's finding those and embracing those and, and when you get it, you, you you know and there's you more people I think are mindful than they, they realise. I the I I think they are. I mean it's interesting that you <clears throat> Like you said, it's being in the moment. That's a enormous term in in the arts. Being in being in the moment is used a lot, and and it is about being that. It's it's experience in the moment that you're in. Well, certain shows we've done because me and Harry have performed together in certain shows, and um, I remember what performing in Hairspray, and the um, I remember a woman coming up to me, one of my friends, when I just feel so good afterwards, and she'd had a really crappy day, 
And if you think about it, what she'd done for those two hours is sat and focused on something else apart from her life. She'd sat and focused on the character walking on, singing a song. Oh, that was nice. Oh, that person's walking over here. Yeah. Oh, that was good. Oh, that was funny. Ha, ha, ha. And in an hour or two, like in your job acting professionally, they are focused on something else rather than what's going on. And what yeah. happens then, they can start to detach and start to let things go. And from that, they'll, they'll start to naturally feel better. If she someone had said to her before hairspray, saying, come on, feel better, think of positive things, she would have kind of gone, fuck off. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Probably she, not enjoyed the show. Exactly. Because she just comes to the show, and then maybe at first, the first 10 minutes, she was a bit fuzzy and a bit, then she'd watch it, and oh, that's quite funny, oh, that, I like that kind of And that focus, because she's focusing on that play, and I think because the energy and the synergy on stage just draws people's attentions in, yeah. That then it's escapism, and that's why theatre is so good. Even if it's a sad movie, you're engaged in it, or, or you're, and that's why I think real theatre and and films, everything come alive because you're focused on something that isn't your life. But I think it's that's the relationship. That's the relationship that there's a lot of trust put between an audience member and an actor, or whatever whatever they're paying to see, whatever arts they're paying to see, um, or not paying, whatever. Um, but there is a there is a clear relationship and there's a clear kind of thing because if you're there say you're on a stage if you're there and you're feeling the occasion and you're being aware that there's so many people sat in front of you in in chairs and you're in a theater and there's actors next to you and there's a prop here and a set there and then you're not giving them what they're giving to you is the give away you get back what you give and it's like there's a there's a thing between you and they're not going to feel that that energy that you're putting out there. They're not going to feel the performance. They're not going to feel the emotions that you're giving if you don't believe them. And you have to be there. You have to... I think that's what separates a actor from a brilliant actor is being there and making an audience member that sat there by themselves completely disappear and... and join you doing what you're doing that's because the power of the it's, arts, though, isn't it? yeah it's completely the power of the arts and that's why you have such magical experiences in the theater and that's why kids enjoy the panto and and they have those experiences in theater that i think you can't get anywhere else i think as well that it's always been there throughout the kind of I hate the phrase hands of time but like you know the the but like in shakespearean time obviously they did plays then there's always been some sort of performing arts mm -hmm. And it's something that it is our escapism. Because why would people go otherwise? Exactly. What would they do, really? It's just, we have a, for us, it's a it's a ridiculously lucky position to be in when we're doing what we're doing because it doesn't feel like a job. Sometimes, like the admin and, and all those things outside of when you're actually acting, that that's a job, that, that can be a drag. And that's allowed to be a drag. But when you're actually doing it and when you're experiencing it and when you're going through rehearsal or you're preparing for something or you're filming or whatever, that is so enjoyable and it's so brilliant that, you, that we can do that. Um, <clears throat> so we have a, a, a debt to pay really and that we have to give our best to, to be in that moment and really experience something to because we're enabled, we're, we're being enabled to do what we want to do. And I think mindfulness is a big part of that in your personal life. Because if you can't understand yourself, then I don't think you can understand a character. And I don't think you can be a character if you don't get you. Yeah, no, it makes absolute sense. Well, we're near at the end of the hour. Is there any final question? I think we've wrapped yeah, up. I think I've... It's funny how, I've, obviously I can't see your notes, but a lot of things we've discussed are, 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 are cross, cross over. Reference. Yeah, it's completely cross you know over. I mean? Um, but thank you very much, Harry, for joining yeah. us. Um, I think it'd be interesting to maybe come back one day and see and see where we are. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, Harry's offered to edit some of these podcasts, yeah, so you might job. see Harry about. Um, if people want to know more about you, Harry, um, where can they get hold of you? Instagrams, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, not. Twitter, whatever. But you have to tell them. <laughs> Bit of a plug, yeah. Just get on there. It's Harry W. Burke. Harry W. Burke. Is that on Twitter and Instagram? That's Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. Hashtag actors life. Hashtag. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was one of the big ones. I hate hashtagging. I hate I hashtagging too. Do I, I think it's these days. Hashtag It's cringe these it's days. Cr oh, I hate it. Cringe. I hate it. 
but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, anyway, so tune in. These podcasts will be done as and when. I would like to say weekly, but then I create pressure on myself. <laughs> then I get. Uh, I just I need to be mindful. Yeah, I need to be mindful. Of <laughs> I need to look you. after myself. <laughs> But thank you. If you've enjoyed it, then please spread the word. Please um, download it. Please share it with people on Facebook and all the other. Get over to head, head yeah. rest on YouTube. Yeah, so head rest on YouTube. Um, I'm on there, it should be there should be a link on my website. Go to www.headrest.me. See what I did there? Wow. I wanted hot headrest.com. Only it gone. Me. .co.uk. It gone. <laughs> so I thought me is about me, isn't it? So. Typical. So always about them. <laughs> Uh, but yeah but thank you very much for listening and hopefully you've got something from it leave any comments in the boxes and I'm sure we'll get back to you and we'll see you next time thank you very much Harry cheers